Welcome back. In this video, we will handle the bottom navigation bar. Now, if you look at the app that we're going to build today, you'll see that bottom navigation is at the bottom of the screen. So if I click on inbox, it opens up the inbox screen. If I click on start, you can see how it changes. This one is now the selected one. So it has got a blue star and start. And if I select that one and this one and this one, you can see it changes the page on what I click and also the appearance of the icon and the text. And there's different settings we will look at also on how to set this. Now, if you look at this page for material IO components, bottom navigation, flutter using the bottom navigation, they give you some sample code. Uh, they show you how to use it. So for example, you can see they're the same as I've shown you there now. Uh, they show you how to add the items. They explain it a bit. For example, this part is just a simple container. There's an inactive icon. Number two is an inactive icon with an inactive text label. So that's the same as my scent now. Yeah, it's inactive. The active one is blue. So the active one will be the active icon and the active text label. And then you can also see that container and the background. You can set a color for it or you can leave it without a color. And then it gives you all the container attributes and some in more coding information and so forth. So this is quite nice to go through this page to also see how you can do the bottom navigation. But if you do not want to go through this page, I'll show you how to do it and set it up. So go to a new tab and you can go to bit.ly forward slash bottom nav resources. So make sure you type it exactly the same spelling. Any Everything capitalization must be the same. If you open up that page, it takes you to a defaults.zip, and this is a folder that I want to place inside of my lib folder. So make sure that you download that folder or that zip file. I'm going to close this web page now. Let's go to our downloads folder, and inside of the download folder, I will get defaults, and I'm going to extract that defaults folder. And this is you know, defaults. Okay, I'm just going to change that. It's defaults. So let's just change that folder name to defaults. Okay, so I'm going to copy this folder and I want to paste this folder now in my project folder. So my project folder, I just created a new application. You can see it's, it's the sample template that opens up after creating a new application. So you're going to view, command palette and choose new application project. And it's called bottom underscore navigation underscore video. So let me go to my folders. Let me just close that folder, go to downloads. Uh, not to downloads, go to my D drive, go to Flutter, my projects, and there's my bottom navigation video. So inside of my bottom navigation video, inside of the root, no, not inside of the root, go into your lib folder, and you want to paste that inside of your lib folder. So inside of lib, you'll have defaults with your defaults dot dot. In this example, we will not use any pictures, but if you go to defaults dot dot, you'll see that we, we've got two colors there, and that is the colors, either the one selected or not selected. So we've got the two color shades there, and then we've got the draw item text. So, so actually I took this from uh, the previous video. So the draw item text, instead of saying drawer, we can say uh, bottom navigation item text. And for this one, we can say bottom navigation item icon, and we can just save it. So this is the defaults then. Also draw item color. Let's name this to bottom nav. And the same for this one, bottom nav. So I took this from the previous example that we did, the navigation drawer. So we've got the bottom nav item color, we've got the bottom nav item selected color, and we've got the item text. So you can see the text there on the items. And we've got the bottom navigation item icons, which is those icons, the inbox icon, the star, the send, the mail icon, the delete icon. And I've got another one there, which you're actually not using. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six of them. I'm actually just using five in this example. But we could have added more, which is also the spam one. Okay. Right. So let's go into our main dot dot. So for the main dot dot, I'm going to remove everything they've given me, except for the main method with the run app. And we're going to start with a state list widget. And we're going to call it my app. 
Then inside of here, we always start with a material app and we start with a home. And for that home, let's call it the home page again, like we did with the previous video. And then to go to the home page, we're going to use a state full widget and we're going to call this one home page. And that's the basic structure to start your apps with. Here we will set up all the settings. Later on, we're going to have a look at that. And then it goes from there into your application. Now, for now, I'm just going to start running it uh, so that we get it onto the app so that when we start actually changing something, we can see it. Right, so let's go into the state class inside of my home page and let's set up some initial values that we're going to use. For example, I want to start off with an index that was clicked. In the previous video, we also had an index clicked, but we made that a global variable by adding it outside of all of these classes. In this case, it's not needed because we will not be uh, using other classes that will be using this index clicked. So I'm going to place it inside of the state class. Then we'll also have uh, that pages again, the same as we did with the previous video on your navigation drawer. So the pages will be exactly the same. So it's going to be a center widget. So just to put that text view in the middle of the of the screen, and we're going to use a child, which is which is going to be a text widget. And I'm not going to do a lot of formatting here. It's just going to show us the page names. So the first one will be inbox. And if I save it, let's just take that center widget and reuse it. So let's say the second one is then start. The third one will be sent. This one will be drafts. And let's use trash. So let's just for now, let's just use five of them. You can also try and add, adding the sixth one. Okay, so we've started off with an index that will be clicked and we will start off with position zero as soon as the app starts. So if you wanted to start with another, um, another page on the app when it starts, then you can change that value to something else. And remember, if the state changes, this part do not get rebuilt. It's only inside of your build method that gets rebuilt. So don't worry about this changing. And uh, if I'm saying these are pages, remember a page is in any case just a widget. So I could have started here with a column or a row and started my page there. So this is just very simple to show you something on the page. Okay, and then inside of my build method, so we started with a material app. The home page then will start off with a scaffold. And that's why we do not see anything there because we did not start off with a scaffold. Okay, so I'm going to start off with an app bar, and let's make this app bar, just give it a title there, and which will be a normal text widget, and let's set the title to bottom navigation. And save it, and we should see a white screen that looks like something we are actually building. Okay, so that's the app bar. Underneath the app bar, we'll need to go to the body, and like in the previous video, the body will be one of these pages now. So I'm going to refer to the list called pages and I'm going to have the index on the index that was actually clicked. So I'm going to say index clicked. In this case, if I run it, it will just show the very first item because index clicked is at position zero. So it's going to show inbox and you can see inbox on the screen. Okay, so now we need to add that bottom navigation. So how do we add bottom navigation? Well, if you hover over your scaffold, you will see there is a bottom navigation bar, and that's how easy it is. So I'm going to say bottom navigation bar, actually start typing. There's a class called bottom navigation bar, and I will use that class to actually do the bottom navigation bar. Now for this bottom navigation bar, you can see that if you hover or go down, it says the parameter items is required. And let's just look at items. If you look at items there, Items is, in fact, a list of bottom navigation bar items. Okay, so we're going to use items there. And we need to provide a list of bottom navigation bar items. So for now, I'm just going to add two of them. So let's just say bottom navigation bar item. Come on. Bottom navigation bar item. This one. Okay, so let's just put a comma there at the end and remove everything there. So let's start off for a bottom navigation bar item. You can see we've got an icon, we've got a title, we've got a label, 
we've got an active icon, we've got a background color and a tooltip. Okay, so let's start off with the icon. So for the icon, I'm gonna go and use an icon class to include the icon. And I want to go and use these icons there. So it's the bottom nav item icon. So how do I get there? I will go to defaults. So make sure you choose it from the list so it actually imports it. Dot, go to the icons. And let's use the very first one there. Just put some commas in there so it formats it nicely for us. So now you'll see this error and it says items.length greater than or equal to is not true. And that is because a bottom navigation bar cannot only have one item. So let's just finish this one and then we'll get back and see that we add another one so that that error disappears. Okay, so we've got the icon there. And let's also add, if you hover over it, you can see there's an icon and there's a title. Now, as soon as I start typing title here, you'll see it's got a strike through and it says title is deprecated. And then it says also, if you hover over it, title is deprecated, shouldn't be used, use label instead. So instead of set using the title there, we're gonna use the label. So the label, if you hover over it, it's a string. Okay, so we can just directly go to the labels that we've got here. So it's bottom nav item text. So I'm gonna say, defaults dot bottom nav item text and also at position zero and save it. Nothing will change there. It will still give us an error. Okay, so now I've got one, two of these items. Let's quickly copy this one and paste it again, save again. And there we go. We've got an inbox and an inbox. Both are the same. It's because we've got the exact same index there. So let's just change that index to one and to one and save again and we'll see start there. Okay, so we can actually do the exact same thing now for all of them. So I'm gonna copy, paste again, paste again, one, two, three, four, let's have just five of them. Zero, one, let's make this one two, and two. Oops, sorry, there, two and two. This one should be three and three. And this one should be four and four. Let's save it again. Okay, and it disappeared now, and don't worry, we'll need to set some settings first. Okay, so in your bottom navigation bar, let's go and set some settings there. So the first thing we can set is a background color. And the background colors, you can say colors.blue, or you can have uh, any type of color in there. Let's just use the blue 100. That's gonna be colors.blue. And remember, I can actually go and add this color. If it's gonna be reused a lot, I can add it into my defaults there. Okay, so let's say that's the background color. It's a light blue. Okay, so let's set the type there. The type will be bottom navigation bar type. And it's either fixed or it is, and you can see if as soon as I added the fixed there, it actually started showing. So I can either say fixed or I can say, I say shifting there. And shifting means, uh, well, shifting won't work, it needs its own setting. So we'll get back to, to shifting now. Uh, let's just use fixed for now. And you can see there's the item. So if I click on start, nothing happens, nothing happens at all. But you can see it's clickable, it acts like a button, and it's got the correct colors, and it's got the background color. Right, so far so good. So let's go to the elevation also. You can set the elevation to whatever you want to make it appear a bit lifted from the screen so it adds a shadow there. And then also we can have the selected item color. And the selected item color will be in our defaults dot the select color. And then we can also have the unselected color unselected item color is defaults dot just the normal item color. And then very important, it needs to have the current index. So let's, let's say the current index will now be our index that was clicked. So in our case, that is index clicked, it's set to zero. And that is our current index. So if I save this now, it will start at zero, clicking on start and sent and draw and trash, doesn't do anything. So in order for us to change that, there's one last setting that we need to set here. For this on tap, use on tap, leave it a bit. 
and then use that second one or the third one from the top, which is value with brackets. So what is this value now? If you hover over it, you can see it's an integer. So when it gets tapped, it will send back an integer on where it was tapped. So if inbox gets tapped, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that value we want to set to our index that was clicked. So we will need to use the set state method. That set state method will then update the index clicked, rebuild this widget tree, and give me something new. So we want to set that to the value that was passed through. Let's save again. Click on start. Aha, working, sent, drafts, trash. And we're done. You can see there, clicking on inbox, it shows the inbox page. Clicking on start, showed the start uh, page. Clicking on sent, on drafts, and on trash. Everything working fine. Right, so let's just try and change this fix there to shifting now. And this is quite nice. If you save again, you can see now the background color that we had disappeared. But if I click on inbox or on start, you can see it's shifting now and it's only showing the text if you actually click on it. Okay, so that's the shifting part. Now, if you want to have a background now, then this background color, you can see it, it's actually not working at all. So when you do that, you will need to set a background color for every item. So what we can do is to go to defaults. I actually want to show you this. Uh, you can set the same color for all of them. So when it gets clicked, it changes to that color. And uh, because it changes to the same color, it will look as if it's just one background. Let's say colors dot uh, blue 100. So let's say we're doing this. I'm going to take that color, copy it, use it there, use it there. Use it there and use it there. Saving it now, you'll see there's your background. If I click there, same background everywhere. Okay, so that's essentially getting the same type of background color that you had initially when we just had that one property. Okay, so that's how you would have your solid background color. But let's say you want to change your color every time it clicks. So let's go with colors.red. Let's make this one colors dot uh, let's use purple let's make this one deep orange let's make this one blue and let's make this one a green all right let's save again so now you can see clicking there makes it red clicking there makes it purple clicking there makes it orange clicking there makes it blue clicking there makes it green and then obviously you'll need to go and change maybe these icons to white if you want to do something like that. But you can see uh, this is how you can have different colors every time you click the bottom navigation bar. So for this, I would rather go then to the defaults and make this colors dot white. And even this one also a color of white because it's clearly, you can clearly actually see now that when you click on it, let's just run it again because you've changed the defaults. Uh, you can see now if I click there, it actually you can actually clearly see which one has been clicked without changing colors. Okay, because of it's the only one with the word underneath it. Okay, so this way you can have then different colors popping up on your bottom navigation bar. And you can see still working fine, starred, sent, and defaults 100%. Hope you've learned something from this video. See you in the next one.